Okay, I think we'll get started. Uh, so today we're going to really cut to the heart of the basic type of computation that one does to determine equilibrium, const uh, equilibrium concentrations if we know an equilibrium constant for a reaction. So this is a part that in a normal general chemistry course, college general chemistry course, uh, in typically general chemistry 2, you'd spend a great deal of time working with these so-called ice charts. And so we're going to start today with that. We'll certainly use them for the next few days, uh, but here I'll encourage you to really get into your general chemistry book, get this down very well. It's going to look pretty easy at first, but you want to that's okay. You want to just practice, practice, practice these. It's so essential to be able to answer chemical questions about chemical equilibrium. Now, the ice chart is really just a, a nice bookkeeping way of calculating things. It's nothing profound about it, but it is uh, through the course of history of people teaching general chemistry, this has become uh, sort of the standard way to approach these problems. And the basic problem is if we've got a chemical reaction and we got the equilibrium constant, if we mix certain concentrations of reaction, reactants and products, what do we have at the end? What does it come to with, at equilibrium? So that's sort of the central question of an equilibrium problem. And so these ice charts stand for initial change and equilibrium. So we write down the initial amounts. We let an unknown variable x represent the change, and then we use the stoichiometry of the reaction to relate those changes to one another, and then we subtract uh, the initial from the change to give us the equilibrium amount. Now, I think the only way to understand this is to do some, so let's. I'm going to go through three examples here, and then uh, again I really encourage you to pound away on many examples in, in your book, and uh, every general chemistry book you have will have a lot of examples on these. Okay, so let's, let's take the first example. So we've got an aqueous, everything's aqueous. Uh, A plus 2B goes to C, so there's our stoichiometry. 1A, 2 moles of B, and one, make 1 mole of C. The equilibrium constant is given to us here, so that would have to be given to us. And we're told we're gonna start with no C around, uh, so a very typical experiment. We start with no C and then we're going to mix A and B together such that the concentration of each is one molar, just to make things easy. Could be anything though. So how we set up the ice chart is we write the letters I, C, E down the side. We make a grid down the this column and then A, B, C as headers for columns. And then we say in our initial one, one, zero. So that we just take what's given to us there. And then we say, okay, I'm gonna let the unknown variable x represent my change, and I'm gonna want it positive. I mean, you could do whatever you want here, but it, we know this is a reaction that's gonna reduce A. So it's good to say, okay, I'm gonna let the change in A be minus x because it's going down, that way x will be a positive number. If that's true, then by the stoichiometry, the, minus, the change in B is minus two, and that's coming straight from the stoichiometry, and the change in C is x, because okay? x goes up. If A comes down by x, A goes up by x. Okay? Notice, this is interesting here, so we're, the, we're in concentrations. So the ice chart is dealing with concentrations. Um, when we work with a reaction, I often tell my students it's always, always, always moles when we look at the stoichiometry here. So when we do a conversion from A to C, it's a mole conversion. But we get away with this because it's all happening in the same beaker, and uh, so uh, we can do work directly with concentrations, and that's a nicer way to go because we are going to connect with the K, which is expressed in terms of concentrations rather than moles. So you could do it with moles, but it would be a lot of extra steps. So we work with concentrations here, which is okay. So we're using a stoichiometry even though we're talking about concentrations rather than moles. All right, so now we write the equilibrium. So at equilibrium, this will be just whatever we started with, 
minus what we change. And then this will be whatever we started with minus what we changed. So 1 minus x, 1 minus 2x. And then c, this is really, so what this is really, 0 plus x. There, yeah, but we don't write that. So it's just x because c will be the change. Then we are given our k. So in all these problems, we're given the k. We're trying to figure out the final concentrations. And so we know that k is products raised to their stoichiometric factors. So a to the 1, sorry, c to the 1, concentration of c to the 1, concentration of a to the 1, and then concentration of b to the 2. And so we get that. Now, uh, we can simplify this, right? Do some algebra, get it as in the form of a polynomial equation. And this happens to be third order. And back in the old days, when I was taking general chemistry, then we really couldn't handle these because we'd have to, I mean, you can in principle solve a uh, cubic equation, but you certainly wouldn't do that on a quiz or test or anything. But nowadays we've got um, either a calculator can, can do this or uh, Wolfram Alpha, for example, would be great to get the solution. So it's opened up computer, uh, the computer algebra systems like Wolfram Alpha have opened up a lot of um, opportunities to have a lot more different diversity of problems in chemistry. We don't have to make always easy ones. Now, when we have a cubic equation, fundamental theorem of algebra tells us we're going to have three solutions. And in this case, they're all real. And they're all actually not unreasonable. They're both, they're all um, positive, right? If any of them were negative, that would be an unphysical solution. We could toss it out. So we have to do a little work to figure out which one of this is the physical solution. So we'll very often in these ice charts get, uh, we'll be solving polynomial equations and getting a bunch of non-physical solutions and one and only one physical solution. Well, so if we just look at this, well, all these work. So this doesn't help us because we'd still be left with uh, a and then C, of course, doesn't matter. That could be any of these. So it's going to be this guy that's going to determine things. And so we know whatever happens, our concentration of B cannot go negative. It has to be positive. And so we're taking 1 minus 2x. Both of these numbers are bigger than a half. And so when we multiply by 2, it's going to be a number bigger than 1. And that would take us into a negative concentration. And so indeed, this is the physical solution to this problem. So the final concentrations are 1 minus that, 1 minus 2 times that, and then just that. And so that solves the problem. This ice chart method just makes things every, everything really smooth and slick. All right, uh, we'll go on with another example. Here we've got uh, A goes to B and C. Uh, this is a gas phase, so we've got a Kp here, and we're told it's uh, 4.2 times 10 to the minus 1, or 0 0.42. We're going to have initial concentration of A, and then no B or C around. So again, this is typical. We have reactant, no product. It's an often That's often an initial condition, although we certainly won't need to do that, and our last example will be a case like that. So ice chart again, ICE. We write in our initial amounts, and this now is in pressure, atmosphere, because we're going to be working with a Kp, so these will be the partial pressures. Then A is going to change by minus x. If that's true, then B and C change by x. And so the equilibrium pressure will be our initial pressure minus x here, x and x. So here is our K. We've got partial pressure of B times partial pressure of C. Okay, both of which are x, over partial pressure of A. So that's just Kp. This leads to a quadratic expression uh, right here. And we have two solutions. One is negative, one is positive. Negative would mean these end up with negative pressures. right? So this one can be tossed out. And so here is our physical solution. And so our pr partial pressure of A is our initial. 0 0.33 minus this, which equals uh, 0 0.114 114 atmospheres. And then B and C are just 
uh, directly uh, this. So that's an ice chart involving a, a KP. Now let's do one example that's a little more sophisticated. We're going to not start with zero uh, product. So we'll start with some product that can happen sometimes. And we will actually have a reaction here that has a solid in it. And so if we recall the K in this way, so in this case, we're going to go A aqueous plus B solid goes to C aqueous. The K for that is going to be concentration of C over concentration of A, and then we don't use, we, we put in a one, we put in a one or we just ignore it when we have a solid liquid or gas uh, in our K expression. So we just have this for our K. That will be our K. So we can write our ice chart. We could. We don't need to include B here because that does not show up in the K. But just to kind of emphasize that point, I put B in here, and this none of this column matters, right? So that's not going to matter. The amount of B will change certainly, um, and we do have to be. So we do have to be a little careful that this is the excess reagent. Right. We certainly could end up, what we would do is we would calculate this ice chart. Well, let me, let me talk about that at the end. So, all right. So then we have one and one. We're going to start with some product here now. C around. And I just chose them to both be the same. They could be anything. A is going to be a minus X. So C is going to change by X. And so this is going to be one minus X. This is going to be one plus X. Uh, we've got a K of 2.12, and so here's our equation. We can solve this and uh, pretty readily, and we get, because uh, it's just a linear equation, uh, 0 0.359. There's only one solution here because it's linear, and so this is a real physical solution. And so then we have that. Let me come back to what I was uh, starting to say earlier. If uh, so, one thing we should check is if we were given a certain amount of B, like we had uh, two grams of B or something like that, then we would want to make sure that when we consumed this much A, is there still enough B around? So this could be a pretty, a pretty uh, complicated problem uh, where they would give you the problem and B would actually be the limiting reagent and we wouldn't actually make it to our um, equilibrium before running out of B. So that's certainly possible. But here we assume it's excess and then we find our finals. All right, so hopefully uh, you could follow this pretty easily. Um, definitely see if you can just start with a blank sheet of paper Take a problem out of the book, see if you can get construct the correct ice chart. Try to work with a variety of different reactions, uh, different starting amounts, and um, get really good at this. So it's worth pausing going through the videos here for, for a while and really focusing on um, getting this down.